guys, I sure come at you today with another Raid Shadow Legends Champion Guide, this time on the Incredible Void Rare Champion, Painkeeper. Uh, before we get to the guide, guys, let's go ahead and give some love to you guys for requesting this champion. We have John Valencia. Thank you for the good vibes. Always glad to hear that. Can you make a video on Painkeeper I used to give her 10% HP and 10% defense? But I could use some help. I use a set to give that. Yeah, we'll give you some help, man. Uh, Philly1224 uh, says, please do a guide on Painkeeper. Not just unkillable as well. She's a decent rare. Besides that, today we're actually going to talk about her as not just an unkillable clan boss champion as well. Lamar H says, hey, Ash, asked for an updated video on uh, Painkeeper. I've seen one or two years uh, ago, but I'm looking to use her in my Nightmare clan boss team and need some help. No unkillable for me, but I thought she might be helped for a one key as a replacement for Sill of the Drakes. We'd love to see Silar and especially Painkeeper says disturbed X1000 putting in my request for Painkeeper says well a black hole did you guys see that as the first ever picture of a black hole really really cool uh let's see what else we got oh, oh a lot of requests from Clever Bellower Painkeeper Tyrell Carato Lanicus and Ga Gaius the gleeful here and then off topic where can I find info on Painkeeper I've only seen two thumbnails and no builds Lamar here we go, man. Here we go. You got it. Today's your lucky day. It's all Painkeeper all the time here. And although we're not going to focus primarily on the clan boss, obviously that's what she's known for in most use cases. I would say for most players, but whoever commented that there's a lot more to her kit than just unkillable clan boss or unkillable iron twins, well, they're right in my opinion. I actually think she's one of the I don't know what, where I would rank her. Maybe I should do a ranking the top whatever rares. But I would put her in the top 10, certainly. I think she's one of the most slept on rares because people only kind of, I don't know, pencil her in for that one unkillable uh, role, which she serves well to her credit as well. What does she do? She's an HP-based rare champion. Again, void affinity. Unflagging advance attacks one enemy two times. Fills his champion's term year by 10%. Now, awkwardly, this scales from defense and attack. This is is the most messed up thing about her entire kit and it really prevents her from being a more viable damage dealer which is a shame plarium if you're watching which i'm not sure anybody from plarium watches my uh, third raid shadow legends youtube channel here but just in case you are fix her multipliers come on uh defense and attack on the a1 and then on the a2 it's hp and attack this is from an hp champion just make everything hp based it's ridiculous man either way uh, let's take a quick look here while we're talking uh, multipliers and damage. She has a defense plus attack weak overall grading. They don't even give the multipliers on Hell Hades. That's how bad it is in terms of damage on that A1. We do have a 0.12 HP plus 2 attack multiplier on an AoE on the A2. Now, a 0.12 HP ability... Again, that's very, very weak for an AoE HP-based ability. Uh, so we're looking at like 0 0.25 is when we start actually seeing significant damage out of HP AoE attacks, uh, just for reference for future, right? But this one awkwardly scales off that and attack as well. So her base attack is, is 969. You'd really have to skill quite a bit of attack vis-a-vis -vis probably accessories if you're trying to min-max her damage, right? Which is the case for a lot of players players on Painkeeper because once you establish that unkillable team and everything's working properly, which is half the battle, like, who am I kidding? 90% of the battle, right? After that, well, it's your job to go in there, especially if you're not one king, whatever you're trying to, you know, beat the clan boss difficulty. It's your job to go in there and try to maximize their damage. And that's when I would approach, especially the A1, start stacking on some defense. It's 771. Again, it's a shame. Uh, but either way, you're just not TLDR. You're not looking for a lot of damage out of this champion. However, you know, with a War Master, it can certainly add up just from the A1 alone, right? On the A2, an AoE attack then heals all allies by 15% of this champion's max HP. Well, that's that's a great ability. It's on a four-turn cooldown when booked. You can book it up for an extra, a lot of extra heal there, too. 35% extra on the heal 
if you book it all up. So it's not a bad ability. If you're using her outside of clan boss or if you're just looking for that big, big juicy heal, well, certainly keep stacking up the HP and book her out. On the A3 combat tactics, of course, this is what she's really known for. Decreases the cooldown of all ally skills by one turn, and that is on a four turn cooldown when booked up. This is definitely a, way, a rare, excuse me, worth booking, okay? So that's it, combat tactics. It's a little tiny mini Prince Kaimar ability, the rare version. But again, she's got turn meter fill. She's got heal, an AoE heal, which is actually a really nice one because it's based on her HP, which is always what we look for. And heck, she's got a great faction aura too, HP and faction crips by 21%. A very competent rare champion, beyond competent uh, rare support champion. Uh, so I'm going to show you how I have her built. A very simple build for you guys today. And we'll talk about different alternatives as well. I think somebody was mentioning, how could I build her for a non-unkillable team? Well, you could still use a build like this. I have her very fast, 256 speed. That's not mandatory, unless it's mandatory for your team. And you know what? Let's cover Clan Boss quickly right now. I'm not going to build the whole team around her, but I am going to give a massive shout out to my man, Deadwood Jedi. DeadwoodJedi.com. You should all have that webpage bookmarked if you're at all interested in Clan Boss. He allows you to go in here. This is for free as well. There is a paid section, but you can access everything I'm about to show you for free. Unkillable team or a traditional team. Difficulty is basically what the, ge the gear and the speed thresholds are for any champion, right? But I just go one key Ultra Nightmare, and then you select the champion that you want to build the team around. So I'm going to go Man Ear, right? So I, I, I filter that way, and then I'm given this list. I have, you know, what, five teams here that can one key Ultra Nightmare for all affinities as well. Let me, I have that kind of boxed out here. There we go. All affinities, right? So fantastic. Let's go to the old school Bat Eater, right? Bat Eater is a great comp. It shows you right here. These are the champions that you need and also lists out all their speeds. Now I have it kind of like super condensed, but this is what it looks like when you have it, you know, full screen. So all you got to do is put her in that and then it gives you a, 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 a big, excuse me, a lengthy description of, you know, things that you might get wrong. It gives you the true speeds on these champions, et cetera, et cetera. So again, she is a quintessential piece of a lot of specifically man-eater teams getting those uh, cooldowns of the Ancient Blood, the A3 down one. And that's really, she's kind of the motor that keeps those engines going. Does that make any sense? No, she's the pistons that keep the engine going. There we go. That's a little bit better. Uh, either way, we do want to stack a lot of HP on this champion because, again, her heal is based on her HP, which is exactly what we want. Thus, we're really going for a lot of HP on this champion. Now, that doesn't mean you want to totally neglect defense. I would recommend going HP percentage on the gauntlets, going HP percentage on the chest, and then throwing one of your either your ring or your banner or your amulet throwing a defense on there. In this case, we have it on the amulet because again, her defense is very low at 771. Of course, if she's on an unkillable team, it does not matter. On an unkillable team, we're actually going the opposite direction and stacking up HP, maybe a little bit of defense because all of her skills scales off everything awkwardly, right? So uh, we can play around, right? But TLDR, I would try to prioritize damage from this A1, so stacking a little bit extra defense is always a great idea on this champion. Uh, now, again, in terms of min maxing this champion, if you've got everything working, right now we do have her with HP percentage on the uh, on the gauntlets. Even on an unkillable team, it's still going to benefit her heal, which for the fifth time is based on her HP. Now, if we want a little bit of damage out of her, right, and we could sacrifice the heal, we could go with crit rate on the gauntlets, okay? It's not going to be crazy damage, but it's going to be damage. So that's something that you guys can consider depending on where you are in the game. So again, a speed, obviously, on the boots. I have her here in triple speed sets. Now, if you were going to use her for clan boss, but not on an unkillable team, I would probably go with maybe immortal gear, maybe a trip immortal set, get that self heal plus all the HP if you have the artifacts, right? Uh, or you could simply go with a stalwart gear, right? 
da mitigating damage from AoE attacks, basically keeping her alive so she can keep churning through her A2 and her A3 to keep your team alive and keep everything going smoothly. Uh, so you guys basically saw the build there. I do have her awakened, which is really, really nice. Uh, so what we did was we went with Phantom Touch. Again, she's putting out like no damage. So it's nice to get like a base 300 attack, you know, for that A2 to scale up the damage a tiny bit. Uh, but moreover, the chance, the 30% chance of inflicting the bonus damage actually does make a significant difference especially over the course of longer battles like Demon Lord uh, Clan Boss. So if you don't want to go Phantom Touch and you're just trying to keep her alive, uh, you know, you can go with Dark Resolve or with Indom Ind Indomitable Spirit. Now, if you're going again somewhere where you're going to be depleting your uh, HP, then definitely go with Miracle Heal. That is going to have a 75% chance at, at three star where we have her at restoring, restoring destroyed max HP when healing. And of course, she's doing a, quite a lot of healing on her A2. So we really for a rare champion we have like four masteries that i would recommend considering uh, uh dark resolve phantom touch Ind indomitable spirit and miracle heal so depends on what you're trying to get out of her hopefully i did a decent enough job describing why we would want each of those blessings of course indomitable spirit in dark resolve is going to help her not get cc not not get stunned or feared or whatever uh in terms of the masteries a very very simple build here this is a uh, speed tune friendly right because we don't want to pick up rapid response we don't want to pick up arcane celerity we don't want to pick up cycle of revenge these are masteries that are going to manipulate your champion's turn meter and if we have a speed tune team we don't want any turn meter manipulation we want to predict exactly who's going to go and when they're going to go uh, at the risk of disrupting the whole synergy of the entire team. So we don't want to pick up any of those masteries. Here we did go with Lay on Hands. We did go with Healing Savior and Merciful Aid just to help get more heals out of this champion. And we went ended here at a Spirit Haste for our Tier 5 Mastery on the Support Tree. And of course, starting out with, uh, with, with more HP. The nice thing is, there's no accuracy required at all on this champion. She's fairly easy to build. Uh, on the offense, we just kind of hugged the left-hand side and we came down and grabbed War Master. Now, had these uh, masteries on her for quite a while. Uh, I'm trying to think if I would change anything. We did go a little bit heavy on the offense, considering we're not really using her that much on, uh, you know, for damage. Uh, you, you can easily make the case that we just want to go defense. You could come down here and pick up... Uh, pick up even like elixir of life if you wanted to you know just even more hp thus more healage from this champion but i'm totally cool with war master i think it's probably the way to go uh another option eh. This is, this is my favorite. I was going to say, you could go defense if you wanted to. Come down Retribution, get the turn meter, fill off the A1. But I don't think it's necessarily worth it. I think offensive support is probably the way to go on this champion. Uh, no matter where you're using her. You know, at least that's my opinion. Everybody's got one, right? So again, 80k HP, very fast. Uh, perfect. Perfect build. Easy champion to build. Did I mention that? I think I did. So I already showed you the clan boss stuff. Uh, I already showed you the multipliers. We already talked blessing. Man, we're cruising through this video. Uh, I do want to show you... One of the most difficult, I wouldn't say the most difficult, but one of the most difficult secret rooms in the game. It is Secret Room 7, and I've been saving it for you guys. It is rare on Doom Tower Hard on this track, rare HP champions only. Oof! That is a very, very small subset of champions in the game, right? Now, one of the better damage dealers I have, but I don't have built, and that's Coffin Smasher, because he's got the burn at least, right? So without Coffin Smasher, man, we don't have much at all in terms of damage at our disposal. We have Gear Grinder, who I've done a guide for already on this channel. We don't. We have Gnarlhorn, who I've done a guide for already on this channel. We have Doom Screech, who, yes, I've done another guide on him. And a Corpulent Cadaver, who we have not had a guide on on this channel. His claim to fame is being on the world's best uh, uh, clan boss team, right? The, the best damage in the world, the record holder, features this kind of unknown, or I should say previously unknown, rare champion because his damage increases the more shield that he has so you pair him with Brogni he grows the shield thus a ton of damage from that a1 I see him smacking over 1 million damage on that a1 unfortunately we won't be seeing that today uh so the good thing about him though is he does have a defense in all battles aura it's only 15 percent, but it actually comes in very handy here because nobody else on this team out of all the champions have any aura that i can actually use in doom tower as we mentioned painkeeper has a fantastic aura 21 percent hp but only in faction crypts that's why she's a great faction support champion but anyway guys here we go get ready 
just chill with me for like an hour and a half. <laughs> I mean, I exaggerate, but oh boy, it's a long, long run. These champions do not do any damage. None of them do. None of them do. I wonder who's going to have the most damage on this team. It's definitely not going to be a gear grinder, okay? And it's definitely not going to be Gnarlhorn. He only has damage on his A1, and that's it. No AoE or anything like that. He does have his AoE provoke, but there's no damage there. So it really comes down to Doom Screech, Painkeeper, and Corporal and Cadaver. Corporal and Cadaver has no AoE attacks, but I do think he has probably the strongest overall attack on his A1. Be very interesting. What I want to do is I think this is probably really, really boring for me to just sit here and blab to you guys for 40 minutes or whatever, which is basically what I normally do on my content on the main channel anyway, so you guys are used to it. But I will give you a little bit of respite here, a little bit of a break, and I'll come back at you guys kind of when we're done with the third or when we're nearing the end of the third wave. Uh, the good news is, is between her heal... And, again, this cannot be overstated, but between her A3, constantly allowing the rest of the champions here, specifically the heal of Gear Grinder and the control, the increased defense of Doom Screech and the control of the AoE Provoke from Gnarlhorn, right? It doesn't matter who's around her. These are just the champions on this specific team. But it really does, especially over these longer battles, it allows them to just do what they do best more often and that's the magic of pain keeper especially from a rare champion uh in a, in a fight like this you could even run her in uh relentless gear right because getting that 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 four turn down to a three turn on the a2 and the same thing with the a3 that's really gonna matter right that's really gonna make a profound impact over the course of a long long battle like this one either way guys uh, I've given you a bunch of options on how to build her. For you, it will only be one second. For me, it will probably be, be, uh, be, 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 be a while. I'll be right back. All right, guys, here I am right at the end. 621 turns later and counting 622. We get the job done. And hey, would you look at that? Pain Keeper coming through with second in damage, number one in heals, 1.6 million, 720k, 796k on Corpulent Cadaver. Man, that is a slog of a secret room there, but of course, nobody died, and that's the most important thing. Even if they did, we had Gear Grinder to revive them. Guys, there it is, Pain Keeper, certainly a, a really tremendous champion, and I will say, out of that 720k damage, I mean, a lot of it must have been War Master and Phantom Touch. The power of that blessing and that mastery in terms of really exponentially increasing the damage out of especially support champions, right? So guys, I hope you enjoyed this guide. We did give you some ideas and some resources for Clan Boss as well, which again is what she's most known for. But you can utilize her in really any fashion like this in dungeons as a great support champion. Guys, thank you for watching. And as always, take care.